Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hearthstone. Today is a very special day. Today is the first day of the Knights of the Frozen Throne expansion, and I have 56 packs to open. So I thought, why not make a video out of it? So, today we're going to be going through uh, the pre-order bonus that I got, my three free packs that I got for just playing during day one, and as well as the three packs I got for doing the Frost Festival. Let's go ahead and get started. Come on, what do we got? All right, so I know that they've increased the drop rate, so I'm hoping we're going to see some pretty high-value packs here. Um, nice to just get some <laughs> commons fleshed out, I suppose. Nothing huge here that I think I'll be using necessarily, but uh, not some nothing terribly bad. Considering we don't have Captain Greenskin, maybe something for our Pirate Rogue deck. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Alright, come on. Yes! Alright, first epic. So we got Spectral Pillager. Unfortunately, not a card I'm particularly excited about. It's pretty okay. I think Vile Spine is a lot better just because it's an actual kill and it doesn't have all the requirements, plus a bit of a lower mana cost. But this is a 5-5, so who knows? Maybe we will see it uh, get some play. Uh, besides that, not seeing anything particularly huge. I like Bear Shark just because it's hilarious, but I don't know how useful it's going to be considering uh, that there's a lot of good three mana cards out there. What else we got here? Me missing the uh, <laughs> open pack window. Uh, just a typical one. We got Play Dead, which is actually something I'm kind of curious to experiment with a little bit. Uh, I know it's not the best card ever, but I could see there being some pretty awesome combos off of that. Uh, besides that, Bone Baron is interesting. He's a little expensive, and we got another Frost Rider. I've got a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of Frost uh, Rider and Spell Weavers. Ooh, Corpse Widow, though, is something I'm very excited about. That, I think maybe there may be some synergy here. Um, definitely think Corpse Widow is pretty cool, so that's exciting. Uh, what else we got? Oh-ho! Our first Legendary! Ha-ha! We have Blood Reaver Gul'dan! He is uh, the Warlock Death Knight. That is really exciting. And we got a Gold Frost Rider I'll disenchant later. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, nothing hugely awesome besides that. Uh, but, I mean, seriously, we got our first Death Knight, which is awesome. Let's hope we can get one or two more uh, as we go through these packs. Uh, next up, we are getting another typical one rare pack. Um, pretty much commons here, although Death Revenant is pretty cool, especially considering I like to run uh, variations of Enrage Warrior. Uh, besides that, nothing... Ooh, and I also got Cobalt Scalebane. That's actually another card I'm pretty excited about. I think there could be some real potential for uh, using this with a Dragon Priest. So that's pretty exciting as well, actually. Every turn, he gives another ran friend, uh, excuse me, random friendly minion plus three attack. That is value right there. What else have we got? Ooh, come on! Give me something good. We got a rare. Okay, we got our second Death Revenant, so that's something at least. Uh, Leeching Poison, probably I'm not going to be using much. Crypt Lord, however, is great. I'm excited for Crypt Lord, definitely. Uh, besides that, I don't know about Death Speaker. I'll have to play around with that, but uh, eh, mostly just excited about the Revenant and the Crypt Lord here. Six in, 50 to go. Let's see. This is another pretty lame pack. Uh, nothing here that I'm actually particularly excited about. I think Stitched Tracker might be okay, but uh, we'll have to actually see. I think it depends on the deck, because last thing I want to do is like discover a parrot or something like that. What else have we got here? Uh, ooh, Ghastly Conjurer. That's actually a mage card that I very much wanted. This is awesome. This is that adding mirror image. There's a ton of value in this card for the cost, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, Shadow Ascendant is pretty cool. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not unopposed to this. Two mana, two two. I'm not so sure, but the the buff, the value is there. Um, and I think Dark Conviction is pretty good too. But nothing super exciting in that pack. Hopefully we'll come up on our second epic here pretty soon. Aha! Speak of the devil. Dead Man's Hand. Shuffle a copy of your hand into your deck. That's an interesting one. Probably, I'm guessing that's Control Warrior, just considering um, that <laughs> you don't have a ton, a ton of draw in Warrior. Uh, but that should be 
actually pretty cool. I'm interested to see how that will work out. Uh, I like Druid of the Swarm here. I'm not in love with it, but I think it's pretty good. I like the options they give you. Uh, and then, although I am curious what happens if you play this with Fandral. Like, does it become a 1-7 poisonous? Or is it just a 1-5 poisonous taunt? I, I don't know. Anyways, uh, Venomancer's trash. Drain Soul we already got. Burlock is trash, so... Eh, this is a pretty okay pack. Decent uh, epic, but not amazing. I do like the uh, shattering ice effect, though. That is pretty cool. All right, Blood Razor. There's something I'm very interested in. This is going to synergize with a lot of the new warrior cards. Uh, you'll notice there's going to be a lot of stuff that uh, benefits from having taken damage in this expansion for warriors. Uh, also, Bone Drake may be good. A little bit too slow, I think, but uh, you never know. Um, and then... Wicked Skeleton is trash. Bloodworm is interesting because it's a decent, uh, the only decent power uh, thing that I've seen so far with lifesteal, but eh, I don't know, five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Hard to say. Let's see. Come on, give me something good. We got Ice Fishing. That's pretty solid for when I eventually put together a Murloc deck. Uh, Voodoo Hexer, he's decent. He's like a Shaman uh, Water Elemental. That's something. Ooh, Frozen Clone is something I'm very excited about, because, like, imagine, uh, you know how people always bait you when you try and play Mirror Entity, and they're like, haha, you got a Firefly, or whatever. It's like, well, what if I had two Fireflies and two Elementals, because I can play them from my hand? It's pretty cool. So, Frozen Clone, pretty nice. I actually like that. Um, also, Arcaris Veteran is pretty nice, too. That permanent plus one attack is cool. I like it when they split the value like that, so it's not all... I'd ra I wouldn't play a 3-1, but a 2-1 with buffing another minion is pretty cool. Uh, not a huge fan of the Tuscar Fisherman. I don't like to have to have another target for that kind of thing. Hey, we got another epic. Oh, and a golden common. <laughs> so cryostasis, the epic. Uh, unfortunately, I doubt I'll be playing that. Uh, this is the combo they want you to do. I don't know how much it's actually going to be done. I'm not sure that Frost Shaman is a thing quite yet, but uh, you never know. Uh, so it's kind of nice to get those out of the way uh, and have that combo available at least. Uh, besides that, the Chillblade Champion's pretty cool, although uh, I don't. I feel like maybe if he's three mana, I, I'd like him more. Come on, come on, give us our second legendary already. Uh, we got another Burlock. Uh, whenever this minion attacks, deal two damage to the enemy hero. Wretched Tiller, I'm not a huge fan of this, because he's too easily removable. I mean, there is potential for value there, but I don't know. I don't know if I'll be running that. Nash is garbage. Uh, exploding Bloat Bat's okay, but I'd rather just Explosive Trap. And Shadow Ascendant... Mm, it's pretty good. Uh, actually, you know, I, I weighed in on this earlier. I'm still on the fence about it. All right, let's see what we get next up. I'm hoping for a pretty good open here, just because we haven't gotten a legendary in like 10 packs now, and I'm getting a little salty. Uh, we got the Keening Banshee, which is, it's okay value. I'm not a huge fan of it, but uh, it could be worse. I mean, the milling three cards is not a big deal, but I feel like it should be like a 6-5 for just because it has the drawback. A 4-mana 5-5 five decent, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Howl Fiend is garbage. Vrygul, pretty much garbage. And two Bone Barons, which I've already weighed in on. Not a huge fan, so not a great pack, that one. But hopefully we can get some better luck as we keep going here. Hey, another epic. We got Glacial Mysteries. This is a weird one. Okay, this is a spell I want to like, but I don't. So this is... You put one of every secret that you have in your deck on the battlefield, but the problem with mage secrets is there's, like, actually only three triggering effects that trigger your secrets, so if they play one spell and one minion, that's all your secrets pretty much dealt with, except for a vaporize or, like, a ice barrier, which, you know, are not hugely useful uh, at that point. So, I don't know. I, I think Glacial Mysteries will be interesting. I think you have to have just the right secret combination to make it worth it, and I don't play a ton of secret mage, so we'll have to see how things shake out as the meta stabilizes here in the next week or two. All right, come on. Man, another garbage pack. Uh, we're just filling out our collection here. Could be worse, but <laughs> yeah, it could be so bad that we get two duplicate uh, Venomancers. Nice. I'm getting a lot of doubles here, but uh, that's okay, because hopefully at the end of this we're going to have a good amount of dust, and then next episode maybe we'll craft something. Ooh, okay, Roll the Bones. Okay, this is a card that I've really been looking forward to. So, Roll the Bones is actually insane. This is basically a rogue AoE, or excuse me, a rogue uh, 
a, a multi draw. As long as you're running a large enough death rattle deck, which you do have to have a dedicated deck for it to get its value. I think you want to draw at least two, possibly three cards to make it worthwhile. Um, then this is huge value because you can cast it multiple times for the two mana. I think though you'd have to have at least a guarantee of getting at least like three minions out of it to make it really great. Uh, besides that, not a ton of amazing stuff here. Web weave is decent. I wish it was one less mana, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, and then the rest is just kind of garbage. Spirit Lash I'm not so sure about, and I'll have to see how that actually plays out in an expansion. Come on, give me something good. Nope, more trash. All right, so now we've got uh, Night Howler, which is interesting. He's not actually the worst ever. Maybe we'd run him in Enrage Warrior. We got our second Icebreaker, which if we do decide to go crazy-ass Freeze Shaman, then that's an option. And actually, Skelemancer is a card that I'm on the fence about. I kind of like the idea of it. I like five mana for uh, ten, you know, total stats, but at the same time, the fact that it only triggers the 8-8 if it's killed during your opponent's turn really kind of saps a lot of the uh, potential value from it, because they can just not kill it. I don't know. Definitely something you'd want to give taunt or use to prevent AoE. Hey, another epic. Oh, okay, this is an epic that I definitely wanted. Uh, actually, we got a couple cards here that I'm excited about. So first up, um, Rattling Rascal. Really great. Uh, I'm really excited about the potential of this. So you can, it's four mana for a 2-2, two, two, and then you also summon a 5-5 five, five Skeleton. Then when he dies, you summon one for your opponent, but I think that's still worth it. I don't think it's the best card in the whole set, but it's definitely one that I wanted to get my hands on, so that's exciting. Also, Forge of Souls is really solid if you're running a Pirate Warrior or Weapon Warrior deck, just because drawing two weapons is fantastic. For two mana, two mana, draw two, yeah, I'm in. That's fine by me. What else we got here? Come on. Another epic and a legendary. Now, this is the kind of pack I'm looking for. All right, Ultimate Infestation. Yes, okay. This is an awesome card. I think this might be my favorite card in the expansion. It's 10 mana, and it's basically you win. It deals 5 damage to the enemy, or to a target of your choice. You draw 5 cards, you gain 5 armor, and you summon a 5-5 ghoul. I mean, what's not to like about it besides the mana cost? Especially considering it's a druid card, and you can rush to that mana. Nuts. Um, Hadronox, also pretty exciting, not the best uh, druid legendary, I don't think, but resummoning all your taunt minions is definitely uh, not a bad thing. I could see this being a game changer. I wish it was a little less expensive. And then Bone Mare, he's a common, but he's a card that I'm pretty excited about as well, just because it's a divine, sh or excuse me, it's a uh, uh, Blessing of Kings combined with Taunt plus a 5-5. Five five. That's pretty good. That's great value for the mana cost. It's basically, Blessing of Kings is 4 mana, so it's a 3 mana 5-5 five five and Taunt. That's great. That was a solid pack. Let's get some more like that. Come on. So far, the count is, I think, four epics and two legendaries. All right, Despicable Dreadlord. Interesting. Not a huge fan. Dealing one damage to all enemy minions every turn is pretty good, but it seems like it'd be too easy to kind of work around. The rest of it is all repeats. It's going to go a little bit faster here once we've uh, kind of talked about all the cards that we've seen. <laughs> We're not going to go over all of them twice, so. Uh, Death Axe Punisher. Interesting. Um, I don't think I'll ever run this, because I don't think there's enough lifesteal minions, but it's it's neat, I suppose. Uh, Phantom Freebooter is pretty good. I think I prefer Bloodsail Buccaneer, because it's, uh, it doesn't get the, it definitely, uh, you know, it doesn't get the health bonus that this one would, but the mana cost makes all the difference, in my opinion, so, eh, I don't know. Um, and then Grave Shambler, I just can't see your weapon being destroyed enough times while it's on the board for it to get value, and... Breath of Syndragosa, I think, is just like a bad arcane missile. They really want to push Freeze this expansion because it's, you know, Knights of the Frozen Throne, but I don't know that it really works that well. Hey, another epic. Nice. Hey, we got a second Dead Man's Hand. That's that's fine by me. <laughs> I, don't, I still am not quite sure how I would use it in a warrior deck, but it seems great. So, Plus, we got a second Cobalt Scalebane, which is another card that I was definitely interested in. So, pretty solid pack there. Uh, Hopefully, though, we have a couple more legendaries in our future here. we got 33 to go. All right, come on, come on. Nah, two rares. So, uh, we've covered everything here, uh, except for we, I don't think we've actually talked about Arrogant Crusader. It's interesting. I don't love it. I don't think it's very good value. Four mana for a 5-2 is stupid, and the 2-2 two -two ghoul isn't that good. So, doubt I'll be playing it, but still nice to have in the collection. Give us more options later down the line once the next expansion launches. 
But uh, we did get uh, a golden rare, which is half decent. Um, I still am weirded out by a lot of these effects, though, that are if the card dies during your opponent's turn only, it gets its bonus. I just don't think that's quite as... Uh, it doesn't lend itself to a lot of really cool strategy. It's more like, I guess it does, but it's very meta. It's like trying to get your opponent to do something they don't want to do, which is difficult. We'll have to see how it shakes out. Um, we got some golds, uh, but they're all repeats except for this Sunborn Valkyr. Sunborn Valkyr is interesting. I think it's pretty good. Uh, giving adjacent minions two health is definitely solid. It's a total of, what, five, nine plus two, so, it, or excuse me, plus four, so it's, you know, <clears throat> 13 stats for five mana is definitely solid. The question is just, you know, how good is plus two health? I think it really depends on the board you're running. Um, not a bad card, for sure, but I, I can see why it's a common. Uh, what else we got here? Come on, give me a legendary. It's been too long again, you guys. I want at least two more legendaries for the next 30 packs. Uh, Spreading Plague. Okay, yes! Second favorite card in the expansion. This card is sick. So, 5 mana, summon a 1-5 Scarab with Taunt is already fantastic. Uh, well, it's not already fantastic, but the second half of it makes it insane, which is, if your opponent has more minions, cast it again. It's basically like a, a, a Taunt version of Unleash the Hounds, but for 5 mana, which I think is fantastic. I mean, you could fill the whole board with 1-5s and then Enrage or something and uh, be good to go. Um... Besides that, though, not... Ooh, actually, we also got Righteous Protector. This is huge. This is in uh, going to be the replacement, probably, for Argent Crusader in all Paladin decks. Huge value. One mana, one, one, taunt Divine Shield. It's the new Annoyatron. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. What else can we unveil here? Uh, nothing too exciting. Doomed Apprentice. I think it's a little too expensive for the effect to be worthwhile, but... Not, not a terrible card. And then the rest are going to be duplicates, it looks like, that will be disenchanting. Come on, something good. Hey, we got a regular Chillblade uh, chill Champion, so I can at least disenchant the uh, the other one, but or the gold one, but eh. Uh, Plague Scientist, I don't think I've touched it or weighed in on this guy. Not a fan. Um, I think... Uh, the I, the fact that it requires another minion to play on as a rogue, you're not usually filling your whole board up with minions with rogues, so I don't think it's consistent enough, especially for a turn three play. Uh, I I don't know. I, I don't think it's very worth it. Uh, then Cold Wraith, also probably not worth it. A little too situational. I don't think uh, Frozen is quite common enough. Maybe it gets put in Frost Mage decks, since Frost Mage is like kind of part of the meta from the last expansion. But we'll have to see. Another epic. Treachery. This is a weird one. I think there's potential for this. Treachery, you choose a friendly minion and you can give it to your opponent. So the idea would be you'd give them something with a bad death rattle. I think the ideal combo would be something like um, play that 5 mana 2-2 two, two that also summons, excuse me, the 4 mana 2-2 two, two skeleton that also summons the 5-5 five, five skeleton as his battle cry. Then you treachery him and give it to your opponent kill it, and then you get a second 5-5 five, five skeleton, so there's no drawback, so that's pretty solid. Uh, also, Defile is really good. It's a, a an amazing warlock board to clear. I mean, really, just fantastic. Uh, as long as you kill one every cycle, it will just keep cycling till the board is empty, which is fantastic. Alright. Ooh, man, we're really filling out the collection at this point, so we're starting to see a lot of duplicates, like here. This entire <laughs> pack was duplicates, but that's okay. It's, what, 100, uh, 125 dust or something? It's not the worst. I'd like to see... I know they've uh, made the drop rates better with this expansion, but uh, I think uh, it'd be nice if they would also increase dust values with the next one. Uh, nothing too exciting here except for the animated Berserker is pretty good, especially in those Enraged-style decks, because you can play a minion and it will already be Enraged, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, definitely see Enrage Warrior becoming a lot more popular. Control and Enrage style warriors this expansion. We'll have to tweak ours to make it even better. Uh, this is almost all duplicates except for Eternal Servitude, which is pretty solid. Uh, you can discover a friendly minion that died this game and you resummon it, so it goes right onto the board. Um, but I think you are going to lose some of the benefits, like uh, I don't think that battle cries are going to activate from that. So I think depending on the card you discover, that could be very solid in uh, Eternal Servitude. Alright, 23 to go. We're more than halfway done, you guys. Just hang in there. Uh, Shallow Grave Digger, pretty okay. I could see this being used in Miracle Rogue. I'm not totally sure about 3 mana for a 3-1, but since it's just kind of meant to die, eh, not, not the worst. 
Uh, the rest of this we have all seen. Come on, we're super due for another legendary, you guys. I could just feel it. No? Ah, we got an epic. Hopefully not a repeat. Hey, Gnome Feratu. So, uh, I think Gnome Feratu is basically trash, but at the same time, I like it because it's milling. I really want to see mill decks come into Hearthstone. It was one of my favorite types of decks in Magic the Gathering, and so maybe this is going to get buffed down the road, and it'll be nice to have it in the collection. And who knows, maybe we're going to do a wild mill deck uh, this expansion. Uh, besides that, nothing too crazy. Howling Commander is interesting. Uh, definitely a good way to pull your Uther. But uh, I don't know how how many decks are actually going to use it outside of very specific ones. Alright. Legendary. Or trash. Uh, everything here is repeats, unfortunately. However, uh, we did get a second Crypt Lord, which is good, because I do like the Crypt Lord for his potential taunt value. Uh, nothing fantastic here, all replacements unfortunately, but we got our second animated berserker, in case I, or unless I missed one earlier. Uh, sorry, we're really booking now because pretty much everything is repeats, I think we have almost all the commons. Hey, we got uh, a pair of rares here, neither of which I intend to use, but are decent I suppose. Devour Mind uh, is great for, you know, getting even more, it's, it's just another thought steal and all of the other priest, uh, discover, or excuse me, priest copy cards. Uh, I don't know that it's the best value at 5 mana, because there's a lot of good stuff right around that mana cost for priests, but uh, not terrible. And then Ticking Abomination I think is just stupid, I don't really see what the applications for this is. Dealing 5 damage to just your minions is pretty dumb. I guess maybe you could Ticking Abomination and then, uh, uh, was it, the uh, play the card that makes them take control of it during your next turn. Alright, another garbage pack, uh, nothing exciting here, all repeats. Oh man, you guys, we're getting down to it now. This is the part where <laughs> the rubber meets the road. I really want to get one more Death Knight. Hey, a Gold Corpse Widow. That's Maybe I'll hold on to that one. We'll have to see. It depends on how close we are to uh, buying another couple legendaries with dust after this. Number 16 is another trash pack. Man, getting a lot of rough ones towards the end here, but now we have a playset of the Chillblade Champion, so at least we can uh, safely get rid of the Golden. Yeah, for you guys who don't know, I always disenchant all my Goldens just because I don't really care about the animation. Oh, yes, definitely wanted both of these. I don't really care about the animation, but at the same time, uh, <laughs> it is kind of nice to have them. The dust is just too valuable, though, for someone who doesn't buy every single card. Uh, these are pretty much all repeats, except for I don't know that we've talked about Desperate Stand. Uh, I don't think Desperate Stand is the best thing ever, uh, considering that there are other ways to do very similar things with... Uh, Paladin Secrets. Uh, basically, this is uh, reminiscent of the Paladin Secret that when a, when your next minion dies, you can return it to life with one health, and it's one more mana, but it does give you the benefit of choosing which one, so I think that's really going to be up to each individual person. Also, a Drakari Defender is pretty cool uh, as a big taunt minion. Uh, for three mana, two eight taunt, that ain't bad. The three overload is interesting, though. I think that's meant to be comboed with the new giant that his cost decreases based on overload cards. Uh, this is all repeats, unfortunately. Oh man, 12 to go, you guys, and it's just, like, getting brutal. Like, <laughs> we're just... <laughs> this is unforgivable. At least we got a gold in common, I guess. That's worth, like, 40 dust. <laughs> Only 1,600 for a legendary card. Uh, getting more repeats here. Jeez, you think we got enough Skelemancers? We're gonna have a lot of dust at the end of this. Come on. I, now we're, we're on our last 10 packs. We need to get one more legendary. You've got to be kidding me if I open 56 packs and only get two legendaries. That's nuts. <laughs> I know there's at least one guaranteed legendary, or I think there is in the adventure, but I... <laughs> this costs too much money not to get at least three. Come on. I feel like they're going to wait till like, second to last. Uh, we got another epic, so that's something. Ah, yeah, second treachery. I'm still not sure that I'll be running Treachery, but it's not bad. And also a second Forge of Souls if we didn't have one, so that's worth it. Oh, I'm starting to get real nervous. Um, oh, thank God. Yes! Yes! You guys, we got the best legendary. I'm so excited. Okay, we are going to be doing crazy Hunter Beast decks this expansion. Deathstalker Rexar is idiotically good. He's a six mana 
Uh, he's, it's a six mana hero transformation. He gives your hero five uh, armor. It deals two damage to all enemy minions, so it's an explosive trap built into it. And it changes your hero power to build a beast, which allows you to discover two beasts, pick you know, you pick from three each time, and then it combines them, text, stats, and name, into one, like, hilarious portmanteau monster that has awesome value. I am really excited about getting De Deathstalker Rexar. That is, that has made this whole thing worth it. I am super stoked about that. Expect to see prodigious uh, Beast Hunter decks. Uh, nothing too exciting here. Mindbreaker is situationally useful. I don't know that he's worth running in a deck just because most people aren't going to have uh, really, really hero power dependent uh, decks running. But uh, he's not a bad card if they had maybe like a, a, a Death Knight or something. Uh, nothing too exciting here. I'm not a fan of Unwilling Sacrifice. Uh, Tainted Zealot, if it wasn't a 1 1, I think I'd like it, but. I don't know. I think it's a little too expensive. Maybe if it had like a uh, excuse me, a minion tag, like a type tag. Nothing too exciting here. Uh, all repeats. That's okay though. We got three to go. Let's see if we can luck out and get one last legendary. No dice here. Uh, we did get another Corpse Widow, so I probably will disenchant the golden one. I wouldn't mind getting, like, one of the princes, maybe, or something. But that's okay. I mean, if even if we don't, really, we, we got our money's worth in my from my perspective. I don't know why Toxic Arrow is epic. This card is garbage. This card is literally garbage and should not be in the set. And I'm, I'm not going to get into it, but it's stupid. All right. Last one. Oh, shit, you guys. We got another legendary in our last one. What could it be? Putricide. Wow, we're going to have a really interesting hunter uh, experience this expansion. So Putricide, after you play a secret, put a random hunter secret onto the battlefield. Pretty good. Decent value. Four mana is uh, kind of a crowded space for hunters, but, you know, it's great for mid-range in my opinion. I think this is pretty darn good if we maybe do a wild secret hunter, or even if we just want to have a mix of secrets in um, a modern hunter deck. But that is all 56 packs, and there are only... There's only one thing left to do here before we call it an episode, and that is we are going to really quick go ahead and see how much dust we have from all of that. This will give us a rough idea of how many duplicates we got. Really? I'm actually shocked. We only got 760 dust worth of uh, extra cards, which is ironically exactly how much I have, which is going to leave me with not enough to craft another legendary, unfortunately. But... We're not that far off, so maybe after an arena or two and uh, buying a couple more packs, I will be able to craft something. For now, though, I really did get every single legendary that I truly wanted. I wouldn't have minded an Arthas. That would have been pretty sweet. But really, the fact that we got the uh, Hunter uh, uh, Death Knight legendary... Where is he? He says, what is he, six mana? This guy is just so good that I can't even... I, I can't even complain. I, he's I would pay I would buy twenty bucks worth of packs just for this card, honestly. But don't tell Blizzard. But yeah, so really exciting. I hope you guys enjoyed our first ever card pack opening, um, and I hope you guys enjoy day one of the Knights of the Frozen Throne expansion. I'll be back tomorrow with more of a regular episode. We'll be crafting our first uh, Frozen Throne deck and taking it for a spin, so be sure to check that out. Uh, but in the meantime, if you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below so that I know. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you next time.